At the beginning of 2023, Ex and Dow watches appeared on the scene. They caused quite a stir by homaging a brand that were still producing the watch being homaged at a price point many of us would consider accessible. There were cries of blasphemy all around. That being said, they did an excellent job, and the watches gained its own recognition among watch fans on AliExpress. They followed up with what I think was a rushed affair, an homage in titanium to a famous 39mm watch. My review piece was disappointing, so were they just a flash in the pan? That was the question I asked. Well today, I'm going to highlight their latest watches, the x Engineer and the Bronze Diver. I think there genuinely is a new player in town. Hi there and welcome back to John's Watchtron and welcome to my review of not one but two watches from X and Dow. The reason I wanted to do that is because I've got so many watches coming in and there's so many new watches coming out but I think a double header here is certainly well worth it. These watches merit it. Believe it or not in the AliExpress sale, this watch here outsold this one 3 to 1. I was very surprised by that but a lot of you really gravitated to this watch just as I did. And it's a really strange one because both my wife and my daughter love this watch and they absolutely detest this one. They can't stand the colour. Whereas I'm not a bronze guy and I'm not a green dialed watch guy but I love this thing. It's really an oddball for me as well but there's so much beauty in this piece. We'll have to go through and try to explain just what it is that's going on with this watch. As for this one it doesn't need any introduction. This is the homage to the very famous engineer from another brand but uh, we'll, we'll get into that later on and they've done a fantastic job with this one as well so let's get on with it one at a time. Now I got both these watches from the same place that was the Xdow iPos watch store on AliExpress and I paid the full price at the time. It was an introductory price so it was certainly cheaper than the list price we're getting now. This is called the Xdow Engineer there doesn't seem to be any nomenclature for this one just called the Xdow Engineer You've got three movement choices for this one. You have the PT5000 starting off at £222, the Solita SW200 at £303, or the ETA2824 at £368. Spec-wise, this is made from 316L stainless steel, as you would expect. We have a flat sapphire crystal on this one. The dimensions are 39.5mm in diameter, 45.5mm lug-to-lug, 10.5mm thick, and we have BG W9 on the hands and those applied markers. We have 100 meters of water resistance. We also have a screw down crown which is signed and a screw down case back also. We have a beautifully made integrated bracelet which we'll look at later on. And that comes with a butterfly clasp which might be a deal breaker for some. It's also signed and if you have a look at the hands there you'll see that those hands look to be triple cut as well. It's a very nice looking piece this one. Sometimes, and only very rarely, you don't know where to start when a watch has so much good stuff going on. That's the case with this watch. So that's why I'm showing you this brief wrist shot, so we can work our way back from there. This looks a million dollars on the wrist, I have to say. I have to be honest here, I've had a few dressy Gara style watches in my time and I've always gotten bored with them. It must be a guy thing, I just like stuff going on with my watches and maybe that's why I'm drawn to military pieces as well, but this engineer watch is different. It gets no plaudits for originality of course, but for sheer attention to detail, this is the best piece I've handled in a very long time. So let's dig deeper. Holding the watch in hand, the crystal is flat and it has a clear anti-reflective coating. It's lovely and clear and it has a beveled edge. Look at how it interacts with that sloped inner polished surface of the bezel. It's just stunning. Look how it reacts in the light. The bezel itself is not flat. It drops away ever so slightly. Its fine circular brushing is only punctuated by five tiny rivets. 
There is another sloped edge beautifully polished before it turns down at 90 degrees to the case where you have yet another edge and that final edge is finely brushed meeting the case. That finest of brushed finishes continues on the top of the case, this time in a linear direction, dropping off on those beautiful lug shoulders before meeting the integrated bracelet. The case is not simple though, having a slender chamfered edge running both sides of the case length before again dropping at the shoulders to meet polished companion edges of the outer edges of the bracelet. Impeccably done. Back to the dial, yes I haven't forgotten. That characteristic checkerboard effect is masterfully done and the finish flickers in and out of the light revealing further detail. You just can't take your eye off it. Both the logo above and the name below the pinion look to be part of the dial. Raised somehow and then overprinted in silver. A very subtle effect but not in your face. The date window is tastefully done and the window is framed gracefully in silver. The date wheel colour matched to the dial. There is the tiniest chapter ring with concentric circles etched into it which is barely noticeable but can be caught at certain angles and this chapter ring is intersected by precise minute markers crisply and openly printed to leave the dial open. The applied indices are a work of art and look like loom filled bullets ready to be fired into the centre of the dial and they are polished to the very highest of standards. The hands themselves are beautifully crafted with the same pointed edges as the hour markers though they are slightly thicker, to allow for an easy read. The beveled edges are polished to exacting standards and react wonderfully when you rotate your wrist. It's real eye candy here. They are the perfect length too, with the seconds hand reaching all the way out to that minute track, and that counterbalance is so simple but it's wonderful to look at. Now before moving on to the bracelet, we have to take into account the crown and the crown guards themselves, not untouched by wonderful finishing. The crown guards are sculpted precisely and their top and bottom edges have the tiniest of polished chamfers, a really nice touch. The crown at 5.4mm in diameter is the perfect size and is signed with the Ixdow rose. It's both grippy and engineer like, obviously. Turning the watch over we are treated to a lovely finished case back with linear brushing just as on the top side. The case back is of a turret style and has standard apertures to gain access and has a very fine circular brush, just as on the top side. The inner edges though are polished and have all the details of the piece. Xdow Watch Company, Anti-Magnetic, Sapphire Crystal, 10 Bar, Automatic Movement. Absolutely everything you need. But now we have to discuss the bracelet. Now of course whenever we make a watch purchase we always run the risk of not having it fit, due to the links not being the right size, no half links, or maybe just the leather strap as the holes in all the wrong places, as happens to me most of the time when it comes to leather straps, so that's just one of those things. But with this one, it's more so simply because we have a butterfly clasp. It is beautifully done, manufactured to the highest standards, very secure, and it is beautifully crafted with the Ixdow logo, and it's actually the right way up. When you have it on your wrist, when you're taking it off, it's the right way up. It's really, really well done, but at the same time, you want a watch to fit you, and I've just got this one in here from Proxima. Did you notice there it's got the JWJ logo on it as well? But this one has got half links and it's also got micro adjusts in it as well. So it's a very, very easy watch to get to fit. Four micro adjusts, proper clasp, and you've got half links in there as well. So that's what you really, really want. This one doesn't have half links. Therefore, you run the risk of not having this one fit you properly. For me, of course, as you've seen uh, before, I have got the perfect fit on this one. My wrist size is 6.75 inches. I removed three links, so you'd be all right to seven and a half inches with this watch. But as you can see, it fits absolutely perfectly. But it is a concern. I have sent a message to X and Dow to see what they're going to do about that. I'm still waiting for a result of that. But let's get into the rest of the bracelet as far as finishing is concerned. And I think there are no surprises here when I'm going to tell you that this thing is finished to the highest standards. Looking at the outer edges here, we have the continuation of this chamfered edge going down the outer edges of the bracelet here. It's actually a fully brushed affair, apart from polished accents. Polished accents on the outside here, matching that as I said. Also on the outer edges of these centre links here, that H link kind of style. And then also on these inner edges of it too, so it really catches the light and it articulates really well because of it, because I've worked on these links 
top and bottom. You see they've been rounded at the bottom, over rounded at the top, and you get that perfect articulation with it as well. It sits really, really well on the wrist. As you can see, it really does well. It just sits atop your wrist very, very nicely indeed. And with this one as well, it's six and three quarter inches, your lug to lug length, even though you get a bit of extra on here, there's not an issue at all. It just drapes down very easily. On the back, again, you've got that brushed finish and then you've got your integrated mechanism. So it makes it very difficult to change out straps, obviously, but with this integrated style, this is what this watch is supposed to look like. It wouldn't look cool at all on any other thing than the bracelet, but that's just my opinion. So it is something you have to take into consideration, but I'm not going to bemoan it and take away from the quality of this watch because, you know, you've got to some links in there that are not the largest of links, and in the summertime you'll probably find uh, you'll have to take away or put in links as you see fit. But I tell you what, for the price, this thing is an absolute stunner. Now, let's get on to the other watching question here, the Bronze Diver. And here it is. This is the green Fumidel monster in bronze that has divided the family household. I love it, and both my family members hate this watch. I don't know what it is. It's a very strange one for me, as I said earlier on. I've never gravitated towards a bronze watch per se, and I really don't like green dials, but as soon as I saw this one, I pulled the trigger. And as soon as I got it, I fell in love with it. It's just an amazing watch. I love wearing it. My wife and my daughter just can't stand it, and they keep saying it doesn't suit you. But I really don't care what to keep this watch. Whether I win the argument or not, I really don't know. This is the X02T. It comes in four different colours. I'll bring them up just now. And as you can see, we call them Fumi. They call them gradient colours. So you get gradient green, gradient brown, gradient blue. And then you get another brown colour. And that's in a California dial, Chinese fashion. Very, very smart. Not my cup of tea. So let's get into the specifications of this guy. So this is the x Dow Diver X02T. The movement in this one, there's just one, is the PT5000. The case material is made from CUS N8 bronze. This one has a flat sapphire crystal with a clear anti-reflective coating. It has an excellent 60-click bezel. Better than on my ProMaster. I didn't think that would be possible, but there we go, it is. It has BGW9 Superluminova on the hands and the applied markers and the bezel insert. It also comes with a Polish ceramic bezel insert, which is really beautiful, as you've seen. It has a logo and screw-down crown, 200 metres of water resistance, and it has a screw-down stainless steel case back as well. Dimensions for this one are 39mm in diameter, 47mm lug to lug, 11.5mm in thickness, and 21mm lug width. But as I've explained before, there are plenty of other places where you can get replacement straps in 19mm, 21mm, and you can even get them with copper hardware as well on a NATO style strand for example and you also get 3 year warranty with this one as you do with the other x Dow model as well so those are the specifications normally this watch retails at £211 from the store that I bought it from but there is a sale on just now it's the Black Friday sale on AliExpress from the 23rd to the 27th of November 2023 if you're watching it outside those times I do apologise but in those sales it comes down to as you'll see in the cart here, £190, so a really good price for a very good watch, but I will leave links to both watches in the description. Right, let's have a look at this diver closely. So there they go, one supplier, and you get two different takes on watches there. You've got sleek and sophisticated here on the one hand, really nice watch, one of the best watches I've ever handled on AliExpress, if not the best watch I've handled on AliExpress. I don't think there's any two ways about that. I'll take that out of the way just now, and then you have this blunt tool-like watch here in the shape of a bronze diver. Now you'll see here there's something different about this. These little end links in here, they're actually removable. So basically they come out with the spring bars, you take them out, that's it with them in. Slightly different colour from the main case, as you probably noticed earlier on, you're wondering probably how they fit it in. And that's it without it. So it looks equally good in or out, I don't mind either way. It really is very smart. Having a look at the case here, very simple affair because it's bronze you've got chamfered edges but there's nothing polished here it's all left to just go and it's starting to turn where i've been handling it the crown especially you start to see it turning there so over time this will patina up really nicely really happy with the strap on this watch very very nice nice and pliable it looks as though it's really hard and cardboard like but it's very supple 
and it wraps around your wrist really nicely. Really nice hardware on it too. Excellent, you get the XL logo on the outside of that as well. You got a standing keeper and you got a moving keeper X'd out on the inside. Of course you got your click removal pins there as well. And of course you got your stainless steel case back there as well with all the information you need on the back. A brushed affair. Yeah, so this is a very simple but rugged looking watch. But the one thing that makes this different from any other watch is the dial. Look at it. The attention to detail on this thing is just incredible. Even though it's just blocks of cheese on the dial for the indices, that's why I call them blocks of cheese. It's done to the highest of standard. Everything lines up. The loom on this thing is something else. I'll show you the loom of both watches in a second or so. But yeah, it is just beautiful to look at. Ceramic bezel insert also. Nice and shiny. But that Fumi dial really works. Snowflake hands. Perfect length. Just enough information on the dial, X'd out and the logo above the pinion, below the pinion you've got your other information like water resistance, crown operation in this one is a little better than on the engineer. This one's actually really quite smooth, whereas the engineer is still a little bit nutty for me, it's my second one I've had from him and it is still a bit nutty, uh, which is usually what you get with these movements if they're dry. So I just don't know, uh, when you get watches from the likes of these guys, Proxima, you know fine well, they're not dry, they actually work really, really well. Whereas this is the first iteration I've actually had from this company here, so we'll see how uh, these go on reliability-wise as time goes on. As far as the bezel operation is concerned on this one, let's put up to the microphone. And you can tell from that, 60 click. Beautiful operation on it. I'm hardly touching this. Lovely and tactile for a bronze piece, I'll tell you. And it actually works really nicely. And it lines up beautifully. Which you usually find with a 60 click bezel anyway. This is a lovely looking watch. And uh, what I'll do is I'll put it back on the wrist just now for you. And here we go. That's the watch on the wrist. And I've put that end link back in again. Nice and easy to do. That's a lovely looking watch on the wrist, and that gradient green as they call it, that Fumi dial, is absolutely gorgeous. It really is nice. I'll finish with some outside shots of these watches, but before we do that, I want to see how this actually looks in the dark, along with the engineer. Hi there, and welcome back to the Cupboard of Doom. Perhaps a tad unfair to put the engineer in with the diver here. The engineer on its own performs very well. Pin sharp blue BGW9 loom. It does last pretty much all through the night, though you do struggle a bit in the morning. So it's a good 7 out of 10 for the engineer, which is not bad for a Gara watch. However, the diver, yeah, it's got to be an 8.5 out of 10, almost a 9, but I'm going to say an 8.5, simply because there are other brighter ones that do last longer. But this is very, very good indeed. Those blocks of cheese, they do their job. 8.5 out of 10 for this guy. Excellent work. Back to the studio. So there you go. A very solid performance from the cover of Doom from both watches there. Less so from the Archineer because it's the style of watch that it is. That makes sense. This one, yeah, it's very, very bright. In fact, this one, I left for a minute before I put it in the cover because it was just so bright. But it does fade relatively quickly. But at the end of the day, it does last all night. But it comes out of the gates really strong. One of the strongest I've ever seen. It comes out bright yellow and almost orange. It's something to see in actual fact. But yeah, I really like this one. You guys bought this uh, diver here in three times the numbers as the Argeneur during the last sale. We'll see how that uh, goes in future. This guy is not going anywhere. I'm keeping this in my collection. This has to be now the target for every watch to aim for. Uh, it simply has to be for finishing. So therefore, I'll use this as a benchmark. At the same time, I'll monitor how this PT5000 gets on. I think it's a little dry, but we'll see how we get on with that. The other foible with this one is obviously that half link issue and maybe that's what's putting people off. I would imagine that is the case. But for me, it worked out. It fits very well. It looks absolutely gorgeous. And if they do come out with half lengths, well, I think it'll start to sell more. That's for sure. So a really good, strong performer. This one, as far as this dive watch is concerned, I just love it. It's going to be a Marmite watch, I think. So certainly the colours of the uh, strap here and the colours of the bronze case uh, green is not for everybody. It's never been for me either. I've just taken this one on board and I really love it. So I've got a fight in my hands with the family as to whether I can keep it or not, but we'll see how we go on here. So 
Would I recommend both of these watches? Yes, of course I would. I love this one, but this is my personal preference. It performs really well, and the movement is very smooth in this one as well. So I really do like this one. Wears well. Both of them run very, very accurately within a second or two of each other a day. And uh, very good numbers indeed with these guys. Really good solid 60 click bezel on this one as well. Loom to die for. Yeah, it's, it's a great looking watch this one. So I would recommend both of these guys. It's up to you. So maybe you'll see these guys in the sale. You might snap yourself a deal just now or you just wait till a future sale. That's probably the best time to get them in fact. But uh, I'll leave you now with some shots of these watches outside and uh, you can have a proper look on them outdoors. So anyway, I'm going to leave it there just now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell. I want you back here to have some more fun and I'll catch you again on the next one. Ta-ra for now.